Okay, this is a pop-up book called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Frank L. Frank Baum and the art by Robert Sabuda. It's a pop-up book. Dorothy lived in the midst of the great Kansas prairies with Uncle Henry, who was a farmer, and Auntie M, who was the farmer's wife. Their house was small, no garret at all, and no cellar except a small hole dug in the ground called the cyclone cellar, where the family could go in case one of those great whirlwinds arose. Uncle Henry sat upon the doorstep and looked anxiously at the sky. Dorothy stood in the door with Toto in her arms. Auntie M was washing the dishes. Suddenly, Uncle Henry stood up. There's a cyclone coming, he called. Auntie M dropped her work. Quick, Dorothy, she screamed. Run for the cellar. Toto jumped out of Dorothy's arms and hid under the bed until Auntie M opened the trap door and climbed down into the cellar. Dorothy caught Toto and started to follow her aunt, but the house shook so hard she lost her footing. The house whirled around and slowly through the air, Dorothy sat quiet, still on the floor and waiting to see what would happen. Hour after hour passed away and slowly Dorothy got over her fright. At last she crawled over the swaying floor to her bed and laid down upon it. In spite of the swaying of the house and the wailing of the wind, Dorothy soon closed her eyes and fell fast asleep. She was awakened by a shock. The house was not moving, nor was it dark, for bright sunshine came in at the window. She sprang from her bed and with Toto at her heels, ran and opened the door. The cyclone had set the house down in a country of marvelous beauty. While Dorothy stood looking eagerly at the strange and beautiful sights, she noticed coming toward her a group of the queerest people she had ever seen. They were not as big as the grown folks she had always been used to, but neither were they very small. There were, th there were men and one a woman, and all were oddly dressed. The little old woman walked up to Dorothy and said in a sweet voice, You are welcome, most notable sorceress, to the land of the munchkins. We are so grateful to you for having having killed the wicked witch of the east and for setting our people free from bondage. Dorothy looked and gave a little cry of fright. There indeed, just under the corner of the house, two feet were sticking out, shod in silver shoes with pointed toes. But who was she? asked Dorothy. She was the wicked witch of the east, answered the woman. She has held all of the munchkins in bondage for many years. Who are munchkins? inquired Dorothy. They were the people who lived in the land of the east where the wicked witch ruled. I am their friend. When they saw the witch of the east was dead, the munchkin sent a swift messenger to me. I am the witch of the north, but I thought all witches were wicked, said the girl. Oh no, that's a great mistake, for I am one myself. Those who dwell in the east and west were indeed wicked witches, but now that you have killed one of them, there is but one wicked witch in all the land of Oz, the one who lives in the west. But, said Dorothy, Auntie M has told me that the witches were all dead. She is my aunt who lives in Kansas where I come from. We normally see him as the red shoes. I do not know where Kansas is in the civilized country. I believe that there are no witches left, nor wizards, but you see, Land of Oz has never been civilized, for we are cut off from all the rest of the world. Therefore, we still have witches and wizards among us. 
Who are the wizards? asked Dorothy. Oz himself is the great wizard, answered the witch. He is more powerful than all of the rest of us. He lives in the city of emeralds. Dorothy was going to ask another question, but she, but just then the munchkins gave a loud shout and pointed to where the wicked witch had been. Lying, the feet of the dead witch had disappeared entirely and nothing was left but the silver shoes. She was so old, explained the witch of the north, that she dried up quickly in the sun, but the silver shoes are yours. There is some charm connected with them. I am anxious to get back to my aunt and uncle for I am sure they are worried about me. Can you help me find my way? The munchkins and the witch looked at one another and then shook their heads. The north is my home, said the old lady, and its edge is the greatest desert that surrounds this land of Oz. You must go to the city of emeralds. Perhaps Oz will help you. Will you go with me, pleaded the girl. No, I cannot do that, she replied, but I will give you my kiss and no one will dare injure a person who has been kissed by the witch of the north. Where her lips touched the girl, they left a round shining mark. The road to the city of Emerald is paved with yellow brick, said the witch, so you cannot miss it. The witch gave Dorothy a friendly little nod and whirled on her heels and disappeared. Come along, Toto, Dor Dorothy said. We will go to the Emerald City and ask the Great Oz how to get back to Kansas again. There were several roads nearby, but it did not take her long to find the one paved with yellow brick. She was surprised as she walked along to see how pretty the country was about, about her. There were neat fences on the side of the road painted in dainty blue color. The houses were odd looking. Dwelling for each was round with a big dome for a roof. All were painted blue, for in this country of the east, blue was the favorite color. When she had gone several miles, she thought she would stop to rest. Not far away, she saw a scarecrow placed high on a pole to keep the birds from the ripe corn. While Dorothy was looking into the painted faces of the scarecrow, she was surprised to see one of the eyes slowly wink at her. I'm not feeling well, said the scarecrow, for it is a very tedious being perched up here night and day to scare away scarecrows. Can you get down, asked Dorothy. No, for this pole is stuck up my back. If you will please take away the pole, I shall be greatly obliged to you. Dorothy reached up both arms and lifted the figure off the pole. Thank you very much, said the scarecrow. I feel like a new man. My name is Dorothy, said the girl, and I'm going to the Emerald City to, t to ask the great Oz to send me back to Kansas. Do you think if I go to the Emerald City with you that the great Oz would give me some brains? I cannot tell, she returned, but you may come with me if you like.